I'm Kara Lee. And I'm Stacy. And today is North Texas Networkers, a show about connecting interesting people across the DFW area. And it's sponsored by Willoughby Mortgage with Craig Schrank. Welcome. Welcome. We're glad to have a special guest today. In fact, he spent 12 years playing professional basketball. He was uh, one of the Fab Five, if you might know who that is, out of Michigan a few years ago. Mm -hmm. He also is a Plainoite. And today we're going to talk about basketball, DJing, <laughs> who his favorite sports are, <laughs> and what else did we mention? Uh, all kinds of stuff that comes up to mind, so we'll okay. jump into Ch it. Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. <laughs> <laughs> so don't leave is what we're trying to say. <laughs> we're excited to have Jimmy King here today, and so just thank you so much for being with us. We're glad that Thanks you're here. Thanks for having here. me. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. It was good to be back in the Dallas area. I love it. Where I could come outside and the sun is shining and <laughs> it's warm. It's warm. It's not freezing cold. Yeah. Uh, yeah so he not, was still living in Michigan until just about how long ago? Um, just over a year ago, I came back uh, during the pandemic and uh, just, you know, while everybody was sitting down and I haven't spent much time with my friends and family because I've been gone for 30 years since I left high school. So once I got back here, you know, the weather, you know, just the food, the people, the camaraderie, I miss it. So I think I'm gonna move, make the move permanently back. Back home. Well, so tell us a little bit about you growing up. So originally you were from where? Originally I'm from South Bend, Indiana, but uh, we moved down here when I was five years old. So I grew up in Plano. Okay, graduated from? Plano East, graduated from Plano East. Um, so like, I went to Christie Elementary. I went to uh, this far the people from in the area, Carpenter Middle School, <laughs> Clark <laughs> High School. Then I graduated from Plano East, but ultimately ended up at the University of Michigan. But I spent all my life or my first, you know, 13, 14, 15 years here. Well, tell us a little bit about your, your family now. You've got three three grown kids yeah. almost, right? Yes, I got, uh, hold on, let me get this right. I got a 25-year-old, <laughs> a 20-year-old, and an 18-year-old. So uh, my 25-year-old actually uh, works with me and my company, True Champions. Uh, he's a rep uh, in the company. Um, he also uh, has another job, but he also plays uh, semi-pro basketball uh, in Missouri. So uh, he's living out of Joplin, Missouri. My middle, my daughter, uh, Madison, uh, my oldest name is Jalen, uh, named after my brother, Jalen Rose. <laughs> um, and then Madison, uh, my only girl, my beautiful girl, who looks just like me, but uh, much prettier. Um, <laughs> she's tall. She's tall. She is tall. Uh, long, beautiful hair, long, you know, pretty nails and all of that. She's a turned into a young, nice looking woman. Uh, and, uh, and I'm proud of her, but she's at the University of Michigan uh, in her, no, in, going into her senior year. So uh, this will be her last year. And then uh, my son, my youngest son, Malcolm, just graduated from high school and he's going to prep school in Florida. Very cool. So when you were that age and graduating as a senior, you made the transition to Michigan. Tell us a little bit about, I mean, was that your first choice? Was it kind of an automatic, this is where I want to go? Or did you kind of go see, that's see what else is out there? That's a, that's a great choice because with me being in the business that I was of recruiting, it, mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Like it was, it's kind of the reason why I'm in the business now because I know how tough it can be. Well, and rumor has it that you were pretty popular back in high school. Is that correct? As far as a basketball player and pretty well known, right? I was pretty decent. You were decent. I was, I was pretty decent. I was okay. <laughs> Probably pretty decent. I was all right. I, I, could, I could shoot a hoop or two. Yeah. You know, so you but, had lots of colleges looking at you. Yeah, I was fortunately, I, I, I was Mr. Basketball for the state of Texas, which is awarded to the, the top player, basketball player 
and um, I, I worked my way up. That was one of the things that I wanted to do was put Plano on the map. Plano was known for football. Plano, mm -hmm. you know, in Texas is known for its football play. But I wanted to make sure that the rest of the world knew that Plano had other athletes. And um, we had guys that really could have played, you know, well, that play football and come out of Plano. A lot of pro professional players play football, come out of there. Wrestlers, baseball players, tennis players. Uh, uh, Lance Armstrong was one of the most iconic people to ever come out of there. So it's a lot of people who uh, were sports, you know, um, players, but not really for basketball. So I wanted to make sure that Plano was put on the map for other sports as well, including basketball. Very good. Well, I would say you did that. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because we were having a conversation before we started the show today, and Stacy asked you a question about why you don't like Dallas Cowboys <laughs> as your first choice <laughs> in Dallas sports. Yeah, I love this question. So, <laughs> because everybody always gives me the side eye when they say I don't, I'm not like a Cowboy fan. I'm a Cowboys fan, okay? I am. However, I'm not a die-hard Cowboys fan, and this is what I mean. Growing up here, and not really truly being from here, I seen all the blind faith that they put into the team. I understand that I live in Detroit. The Lions suck, okay? <laughs> Okay. So that's, on it, records. That's, well, that's, 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 yeah. that's who <laughs> I've been opinion, cheering folks. for for the past 30 years, all right? So we, we, we pray to make the playoffs, so I get it. <laughs> However, we're, as Detroit is a little bit more objective when it comes to, you know, being critical about the team, that's the only reason why. And, and, and so I love to be the guy that comes to the to the party and ruffle feathers <laughs> while, while, you know, they're cheering for their team because I know how it is as a Lions fan. There you go. That makes perfect sense. Well, tell us a little bit about Fab Five. For those that don't know, what what is Fab Five? So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the Fab Five is the team that of five freshmen who were recruited by the University of Michigan. Um, back in the early 90s. Uh, Juwan Howard, who is the head coach at University of Michigan right now, he was the first recruit uh, as an All-American um, um, who, who committed to the university, and he subsequently recruited the rest of us. Uh -huh. um, he recruited me, uh, Ray Jackson, Jalen Rose, and Chris Weber. And so the five of us uh, were you know, deemed the Fab Five. Okay. And uh, we, at first we, we pushed back from that because it was kind of corny to us. We were like, eh. <laughs> you know, there's Fab Five Freddy. There is, uh, there was also the Fab Five um, that was a North Carolina team prior to us, but they, they gave us the name and it kind of stuck. We wanted to call ourselves five times, meaning five times one, you know, we all for one, but, that didn't stay. I like the Fab Five. <laughs> that's catchy. My husband watched uh, that documentary with me a while back, um, mm -hmm. 30 for 30. Mm -hmm. just, we, it's, yeah. You guys were amazing. Yo, thank you. Thank you. No, it was, and the thing about it is, I think what really made it unique is we all played a certain role. We didn't kind of overlap. Although we could play multiple positions, we just kind of fit like a puzzle and our personalities just kind of fit. So uh, it, it, it wasn't really forced. It was just how good can we really be? Um, and and uh, unfortunately, we didn't win any titles, but we won hearts and minds of youngsters all across the world, really. Now, did you all know each other when he started recruiting you or what made him choose? We knew of each other. Okay. Jalen and Chris knew each other because they grew up together in Detroit. Uh, Juwan kind of knew of Jalen and Chris just because of the corridor between Chicago and Detroit. And uh, I knew a little bit more about them because I'm from the area um, and I always kept up with that, the Midwest recruiting. 
And uh, Ray and I really knew about each other just because of the state of Texas. But the state is so big and, and people don't understand how big mm -hmm. the state is. The only way Ray and I would have played against each other is if we ran against each other in the final four for high school championship because I'm from the North, he's from the South. The only way we would have played each other is in the uh, final four. So um, we didn't really know each other, but we knew of each other. Well, and so now that you, you've been on, now you're on the other side of recruiting and with your company, True Champions. True Champions. So tell us a little bit about that. So True Champions is a sports recruiting firm, um, a service, it's an online service. Um, we help kids transition from high school to college and um, we help them go from zero offers, scholarship offers, to five offers in, in less than 12 months. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. And, and, you know, recruiting's probably very different than when you were coming out of high school. I mean, we didn't have online, pla we didn't have cell phones. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's got to have changed and evolved. So, you know, that's a really important niche to to it, find out about and know how to do it because I wouldn't have the first clue. Yeah, how do you start? And see, so, so just like you just said, Stacey, yeah. so like now the kids, they pull out their phone, they can reach anybody in the world, they can access anything, any uh, programs. So my partner, Isaiah and I and Melissa, uh, we were like, what, how can we, you know, we're having success sitting across the table, getting in front of people, but how can we reach multiple people and help more people across the country? And we brainstormed and came up with this process. And ironically, unfortunately, the pandemic hit. And so we really had to pivot and change and focus on and, and put our services online. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, with technology evolving, we wanted to get ahead of the curve and stay ahead of the game. And, you know, that's, that's how we kind of put the company online and in the service that it is now versus sitting in front of parents and sitting across from coaches and wasting time trying to set up meetings here and there when right now you can pull out your phone, get on a Zoom call, you can pull out your phone, do an email, you can pull out your phone, make a phone calls. There's multiple mediums that you can use. And things like that Videos, everything, mm -hmm. highlights, everything. Wow. Is there a cost associated with it for the students? Yes, there's a cost for it. So uh, we have our, our programs are anywhere between you could do a la carte and you could do the whole program. The average for the uh, for programs that we use are about twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we focus on football, basketball, soccer, uh, baseball, softball, um, and that's men and women's basketball, men and women's uh, soccer. Um, wrestling and um, volleyball. Wow. So I was just thinking there's so many athletes that wouldn't be able to afford that. I mean, are there, uh, do they have sponsors or are there scholarships? How, do, how does that work? So, Sorry, so, no, so you're right. And we do have fundraising capabilities for, for people who are able to pay for uh, services. Um, and we are working on doing and, and building uh, another uh, uh, arm where we can get funds in, where we can start giving away scholarships. So that is a focus of ours. And we, and we do understand um, that a lot of people can't afford it. That's why our cost is lower than the industry average. Okay. Although, um, um, you know, it, it's still a, a high ticket item for most. Mm -hmm. What we try to help people understand is that it's an investment. This is an investment to your future. Um, it, we are, you know, this investment will help you get scholarships that that's a hundred times, even a thousand times what you're paying now. So if you can scrape up some cash, borrow some money, whatever it is, um, because we could, we also give you payment plans, right? You could do payment plans over a year, uh, six months, three months, whatever it is that will help you. But um, um, we just try to help people understand that this is investment. And this is for people who also believe that they can go to the next level. It's not just like we're not trying to... Um, do what other services do and just say, hey, we could get you there. 
You know, no, we're looking for the, the, the kids who are marginal, where the parents and the kids believe that they can get to the next level and they're willing to pay for that because that information, um, you know, uh, is, is important to have. And you have to know in the order and the steps to do it. So it's a lot that goes involved with it. Um, um, but as far as the price is concerned, we are on the low end. Um, and we don't want to price ourselves out because the, the other side to that is, if it's so low, why do we even need it in the first place? Mm -hmm. Well, I would think, I mean, wouldn't you agree that if, it, with anything that you do, that if you're vested in it, right, you're going to work harder. That's right. true. Yeah, I, just, right, exactly. I mean, in, in any kind of top athlete is investing already, whether it's through club sports or trainers mm -hmm. or coaches, you know, exactly. additional lessons. So you, you do, it's an investment. In well, exactly. Future. And that's what we, that's another great point is if you're spending money on camps, you're spending money uh, traveling the country, you know, save some of that money uh, and put it into the program. Um, and and we, 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 you know, you'll have better results doing that than going to one side of the country in another side of the country, trying to get in front of coaches mm -hmm. and, and being one out of a thousand in camps. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, let's go back a little bit to your NBA career. Was there somebody when you were about to go into the league that you really kind of looked up to and who, <laughs> was there more than one person or just? So, yes, there, uh, well, yes, there were uh, more than one person. Mm -hmm. um, the number one guy, and all my boys know this, all my friends know this growing up was Michael Jordan. You know, he was my guy. Uh, I emulated a lot of my game after him. So when I met him, uh, it was really like this, <laughs> I was like this boy, this little boy in a candy <laughs> store, just busting out my seams, like, oh, this is, this is my idol. And he threw me back to reality so quick. And he shook my hand, and I, I really walked up to him, and I was like, hi, hi, Mr. Jordan, you know, Jimmy King. He just looked at me. He was like, I know who you are. And I was like, oh, God. That's pretty cool. That's, I, I got it. But it, it, it was cool. But at the same time, it was like like a smack across the face. Like, what are you doing? Like, act normal. Because I, I literally was just like, you know, hey, Mr. Jordan. Like that, you know. He was like. Mr. Fanboy. Yeah, like, Who was wrong with you? But yeah. but And, and, and another one. Um, and I had the opportunity to play with him um, as well as Reggie Miller. I spent a little time with the Pacers. And I say that as a professional, I tried to beat him in the gym every morning. And I don't care what time it was. It was five in the morning. I, I'll be there at five in the morning. He was always there. <laughs> and that surprised me. That surprised me. I could not beat him to the gym. I could not outwork him. <laughs> and, 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 but growing up, I had a different view on him until I actually played with him. So he's another, he's another guy I Very respect. Cool. Well, so... I'm sure you've seen a lot of things on the court. What would you think is just the <laughs> craziest thing that happened on the court? Okay, now, I know y'all hear these stories, and they're, they're true. <laughs> so you got to be pretty thick-skinned, because they'll talk about your mother. <laughs> they'll talk about your wife. You know, they'll, they'll go there. So I don't have a story about that level. Although I've heard a lot of it, you know, back and forth, I've never experienced that. But what I did experience is in college, um, we played our rival Michigan State at Michigan State. And well, let me back up. This is, let me tell you <laughs> what, what happened prior. So when we were coming out of the tunnel, they were throwing things at us and spitting on us, okay? So so we we went back to our high school days where that's totally disrespect. Mm -hmm. We're not going to let people do that to us. We ran in the stands and handled our business. <laughs> we got back into the locker room. This is prior to the game starting. Uh, Coach Fisher chewed us out, told us we can't react that way. We can't do it. We're like, okay, fish, whatever. We go back on the court. We play the game. We win. <laughs> After the game, we act like we were, my God, say this, 
defecating on their logo <laughs> on the court. But you weren't really doing it. No, we weren't really doing it. <laughs> um, but uh, no, we would have had an issue with sanitizing in the crew. But, <laughs> <laughs> but we, we just acted like, you know, we were doing a number two on the, <laughs> on the logo. So how did that play out? It was great for us, but, you know. <laughs> well, I just wondered, you know, back then if there were, because, you know, now sometimes when you do things, Oh, yeah, 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 you know, it, it was a little There's different. Some... It wasn't, you know, yeah, people weren't as uh, politically correct or as sensitive, mm, sensitive. you know. Mm. Uh, you know, we, we, we make jokes and we say jokes and, um, you know, a lot of time, in my opinion, the jokes that are funniest are like about real life, you know, mm -hmm. and we could laugh at it, laugh at ourselves. But, um, you know, I, I just guess it's just, you know, it's too PC today to do a lot of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So what do you consider either one of your greatest accomplishments or your biggest challenge that you've had up till now? My biggest accomplishments easily are my kids. Mm -hmm. They're the best. I love them. They're, they're great. I know that I'm special, especially when I hear stories about other people's children. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm like, wow, I'm, I got lucky. I think it's fun to see them be adults. It is. You know? it, is. it really adults, is. Yeah. It is. It is seeing them grow, grow up and um, the opportunities that come their way and, and them, you know, living, living it out. And um, yeah, just you know, trying to assist them and guide them. And, you know, when they look to dad for advice, I love it, you know, so I can sit back like I'm just, like I got all this knowledge, but sometimes I still feel like I'm still the kid out of Plano, but you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's great, it's satisfying. That's good. That's really cool. Well, what about a challenge? Has there been a, a challenge you can think of over time that? You know, Yes, and um, and just be like, so I just celebrated my birthday Monday, and Stacy, thank you so much for the beautiful chocolate cake. She made a chocolate cake ah, for yeah. me for my birthday. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. And uh, so, uh, although I didn't have breakfast, I had it for breakfast yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> you had breakfast yesterday, too. Monday. Monday. I had Monday. <laughs> so you're on the same page. That was really good. Page. Did y'all have breakfast together? <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Um, but um, uh, so I celebrated my birthday, and the day before is my older middle brother's birthday who has passed and coming up August 19th is the anniversary of my older brother who passed about five years ago. So one of the biggest challenges is just, you know, moving on, continuing life without them, you know, because we were so close growing up. We did everything together, you know, experienced everything together, and they were my biggest supporters. Mm. Um, my brother Ryan, um, he, you know, he he could always tell, he could see through, you know, the facade. Like if I'm putting on the face, like, you know, everything is good, everything is great today, he could look at me and he'll be like, What's wrong with you? <laughs> and 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 I appreciate that. I miss that from him. Um, and my oldest brother, he was just this special light. Anybody who ever met him knows they call him, you know, we call him affectionately Roddy, uh, Roderick. Um, and uh, he was just entertainment <laughs> <laughs> and comedy. And, uh, and he used to speak these things into my life. Like he would say things like, you're going to, you know, meet the president, hang with Obama and, uh, you know, all these different, he would always say this stuff to me all the time. I would just laugh and I'd be like, man, you crazy, be quiet. And it would happen. Wow. <laughs> and so those things I, I, I miss. Um, and so that's, that's my yeah. challenge, you know, is, is really not having that support from them. Um, do you and, have any other siblings? Times. I do. My, my sister, Lana, who also mm -hmm. lives here now, but she was in um, Chicago and South Bend for a while. Um, I have her my brother-in-law, um, and I have my parents, you know, fortunately. Um, and I have, you know, uncles and cousins and, you know, family like that, but just not as close as my brothers. Yeah, that is tough, for sure. Well, uh, rumor has it that you're a DJ. 
<laughs> I moonlight, right? I'm trying to get, I don't have a DJ name yet, okay? Um, I'm working on about, it. I know. I, yeah, I'm working on it. Should we banter some names back and forth? Yeah. I think we should have our watching audience give us some suggestions. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, <laughs> so, so, so In if the anybody. Below. Yes, yes. Anybody, y'all got a DJ name for me? I'm open to it. You know, Not I got DJ some ideas. Jam. DJ Jam is good. That's good. I, I was DJ thinking Five? about that. DJ Five? Uh-uh. Well, I don't know. I don't know. You know? I, I, maybe DJ. I don't know. What, what, I don't know. what did you want to be called again? <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> back about that. Yeah. Wanted to be called. Jam is good. King, somewhat king in it. A crown <laughs> or something. Crown. Uh, Texas in it, you know. I don't know something. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we're, right, we're working on that, or we'll play our audience. <laughs> yeah, so. somebody out there's got a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I got to expand my my genres too. I'm still stuck in like the '80s hip hop era. You know, I'm still trying to expand. It's pretty it. good. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's kind of hard to pass up the '80s hip hop. It is, but you know, when you're doing different, you know, parties or crowds, you gotta. You know, you got to feel the crowd. Who, who are you, are you, did you do your birthday party or who, who are no, you doing that? No, no, no. <laughs> I was going to do a uh, reunion, but I chickened out. So you haven't got, actually I done your live, you haven't yeah, done no, your live yet. performance yet? Not first, yet. I still got to oh. practice. You know, that would be fun. be fun. We should have you do our client appreciation this year. What? I'll do it. <laughs> I'll you will, practice. you won't. I'll, hold on, give me the day. Give me the day. How many days I got? A month. You tell so us how many days we need. We haven't planned it yet. We haven't planned it yet? <laughs> I need 21 days. Three weeks. That's it. Okay. All right. Okay, we you, need you longer can, than that perfect. to start our event. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We, we will be on it. <laughs> so you played overseas as well. Mm -hmm. What was some mm -hmm. of the countries where you were and what was, is there some highlight that stood out overseas? Um, I played in Venezuela. I played in Poland. Um, I played Those all are two very different places. They are. They are. Poland and I play, as cold as I hear. It is, but I played in Michigan, yeah, so, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. It, this, the weather is similar to Michigan. You know, it's gray, uh, cloud, cloudy skies, and it's kind of cool. But the one thing um, that I could say, especially about Poland, is that. If, if you're looking for American, obviously American food or something similar, you're not, it's not, you, you have to ad adapt to the culture. And the quicker you adapt, the better you are. So, so what was I your favorite food there? They would make me this, I don't even know what it was. Honestly, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what it was. It was chicken in it though. Cause I told him I, I, I need chicken. I, I need some chicken. And no strange <laughs> so, food. Yeah, yeah. So, but it was like a fried, I don't even, I, I, I can't even explain it to you. It was just fried like a filet. Um, like a schnitzel. It, yeah, it, it really wasn't nothing to it, but it was great. And, uh, and let me give you another one. Italy, wrong. Oh. Okay, now wait a minute. I walked into this restaurant and I sat down, of course, the whole menu was in Italian. So they're looking at me, right? It's, it's like a mom and pop shop. It was like this hole in the wall. They're looking at me like he doesn't know what he wants. So they walk over, they offer, they literally take the menu from me and they say, we know what you want. <laughs> <laughs> they go in the back, come out with a little bowl of noodles that big, no meat in it, nothing. It was the best fettuccine noodles I ever had in my life. Did, and that's all did it was. Did they give you some more? It was, I, I, that's all I needed. It was a bowl that big. That's what I'm saying. It filled me right up. I was like, wow, yeah. they knew it. That's so weird about Italy. Cause I mean, obviously when you get Italian food in Texas, it's just gigantic. Yeah. And so my son took just a short five, six day trip to Italy when he was in mm -hmm. college, a group of them found some way to get over there. And mm -hmm. he was just really surprised at how different the food really is yep. and how small the portions were. Small and portions, everything. The rooms are small. Um, streets are very narrow. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even know how you drive down the streets. It's like, they're little, it's like this much space in between cars. It's, it's, uh, it, I mean, not on the main roads, but side roads, it's, it's, it's different. It's nice though. Um, Venezuela, the difference there, um, it's, it's more of the, the haves and have not. So it's, 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 it's uh, culturally, you know, a little different where it's like, you know, you, you, you know, you, you're in the city, but then outside the city, it's, it's like the slums and uh, they advise you not to go 
outside of certain areas, but wow. of course, me <laughs> being, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, I'm there. I'm, that's what I'm there for, mm -hmm. to experience new things. So I went everywhere and uh, yeah, it, it was unique. It was well, different. Imagine if someone walks up with your height they're not gonna it don't matter they it, it, it doesn't matter you you know you know the stories about uh okay i'll put it to you this way i was on the border of colombia we know what comes out of colombia mm. and in certain situations certain teams certain days we got paid with uh how you call it blood money wow, wow. <laughs> they would come in with black duffel bags full of money put it on the take your cut right that's very different it might be a little blood splatter on it but uh that's just crazy that's, that's <laughs> that might be your cut for the month <laughs> better take it huh <laughs> you better take it i'm gonna tell you all right i'll give you another one my first day in venezuela first game in venezuela i'm sitting in the locker room I'm tying my shoe and talking spanish i could pick up a few words because they're dialect is a little different and they're talking very fast so i'm i'm picking the key words okay i i can do it okay yep <laughs> rebound okay so okay got it got it then the owner comes in he walks in with two bodyguards that don't leave his shoulder one here one here and they're standing with two guns like this they don't smile <laughs> they don't they when he moves they move as he's talking, they move. That's what that's that what he's doing, right? That's when I realized. I looked up and I'm watching this, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, I think I made a mistake. This is a bad idea." <laughs> and all I, as this dude is walking, and these guys who are clearly killers who have no soul in their eyes, oh zero. Gosh. That's the first time I was like. I don't know if I want to play, <laughs> but went out there. Well, well, he kept saying my name a lot. I knew I picked that up. So I was like, oh, I, I got to perform. So I went out there and played hard. So there, there's different motivators, too, for, for playing overseas. <laughs> the bodyguards. Right, uh, did right. you stay long after that? No. <laughs> no, I did not. I think I was there maybe two weeks and after that I was that was done Never we're done oh my goodness so if you could go back and be anything else if whatever it is that you've dreamt of as a child you know I think we we talked about this if there's anything I could do going back I would be a pilot oh cool I would be just a, pilot. a private pilot or private pilot or yeah commercial. private pilot I, I would do commercial uh, either or I just want to fly. <laughs> have you ever flown? Not, uh, no, I haven't. Not in the cockpit? No, I haven't. But mm -hmm. I plan to soon. I do. That's exciting. Do. Yeah. That's, that's one thing, yeah. It's just, I don't know. It, you know, um, I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to go into the Air Force. Um, then I found out I was too tall for a cockpit. So that derailed my military <laughs> outlook. And then, um, um, but, I, but, you know, uh, I know that you, you know, you can, you can get a pilot's license at my, my height and uh, it never went away. So I, I just, I, I feel that's one thing that I, I will do. I, well, I so speaking of your height, are you char taller than Charles Barkley or? Yes. <laughs> Yes, that's enough. I am taller than Charles Barkley, the round mound of rebound. I am taller than. I, I did uh, uh, some rehab down in Houston. My agents were in Houston. And uh, shout out to the Postons, uh, Robert Ori, um, uh, Penny Hardaway. Sean Respert, uh, Keevy Baker, the whole crew, the whole crew, uh, Ty Law, y'all, y'all know who y'all, everybody, um, um, Big Sofa, but, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, um, oh, what was it? I'm so sorry. you were doing some rehab? Yeah, yeah, so rehab, so rehab, uh, I, I got, Charles I was going down the memory lane on my boys, so Chuck, we were Chuck. rehabbing, um, in this center um, for NBA players. And it was just he and I in there. And, and you know, we always want to size each other up. You know, we always want to stand next to each other and see how, how tall we really are <laughs> or how much we lie about how tall we are. 
And uh, when I walked up to Charles, I was like, I'm much taller than you. <laughs> so you're super lying. And, 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 and he, uh, he's like, he's, he's about 6'4". He's 6'4". He, he was listed at 6'6". Six, six. I'm like 6'5", six, 6'5 five, six, five and a half. On a good day, I'm like 6'6". Six, six. But... <laughs> But, you know, I'm growing my afro, so I might be about 6'7 now. So how far are you going to have to grow your, your afro to catch up to Shaq? Oh, to catch up to Shaq, I'm going to have to grow it about another, yeah, about another foot, a whole foot to, to catch Shaq Diesel. I got a Shaq story. You don't want a Shaq story? Yeah, I want a Shaq story. Okay, I'm with the I'm with the Mavericks, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm with the Mavericks. It's preseason. Um, he's with L.A. Um, long story short, I don't play the whole game. Fourth quarter comes around. I'm burning up because I ain't gotten the game yet. <laughs> Coach finally calls me in. I get in the game. I'm on fire. Shaq, it's a free throw. Shaq is standing in the first stall. I'm sit. I'm, I'm in the second. So obviously, you know, Shaq is like this much taller. He's like that wide. <laughs> I'm sitting in there. I got him on my knee, uh, bending over, hands on my knees. And he was like, my rookie better than you. I'm like, Shaq, don't don't start, man. I ain't played all game. I don't even want to hear it right now. Don't start with me. My rookie better than you, you this, you that. He but he's this, he's that, you ain't this, you ain't that. So I look at him and I'm like, Shaq, if you say one more word, I'ma smack your head off. <laughs> Did he stop? Everybody stopped. Cause nobody <laughs> talks to Shaq like that. I got caught in my feelings. So that's my Shaq story. Luckily, I got pulled out. The referee blew the whistle because he heard it. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, the ref, the ref told the coach that he had to pull me out. So I got pulled back out. Uh -oh. And I didn't play, so I was on the bench on fire. So kids, learn to control your emotions. I let the emotions get the best of me. I, I blew it. I get a chance to play against Shaq. Out. I think we can't not ask about just any experience you might have had with Dennis Rodman just because he's so out there. <laughs> and Dennis. by the way, he tried to buy me a drink one time. That's okay, my Dennis look, Rodman story. Dennis Rodman it. is a good, well, okay, I'll put it to you like this. <laughs> there are guys who you may think are jerks who aren't, and then there are guys who you may think are nice who are jerks. Dennis Rodman, in my opinion, is a very nice guy. He's just misunderstood. He does a lot of quirky, yeah, a lot of quirky <laughs> things. But uh, yeah, um, he just does his own thing. Yeah, he, he, does. he he's a drummer to his own beat or mm -hmm. beat to his own drummer, whatever. Yep. Do you know anybody else like that? I mean, it. it he, I mean, I. Who I can't is, think of anybody so unique, else over the years unique, that's played that's, that's been oh, that yeah. unique. No, no. Um, I got some. Um, Meta World Peace, Ron Artest was a little different too, mm -hmm. but you know, he, he nothing like uh, Dennis, mm -hmm. nothing like him. Very fun. Very nice. What a fun career though. To oh. I know. The NBA and have those kind of stories and those interactions with people. Yeah, I was fortunate. I was blessed, you know. Um, it, it was hard work, you know. I, it, it, was a, it was a grind, you know. You, you got to jump some hoops, but you know, it's, it's, it's uh, fulfilling. Uh, I asked you this question one time, and I, I liked your answer. I said, do you ever miss it? Mm -hmm. No. No. <laughs> no. Because yep. I got it out. You know, I mean, um, uh, I, I love watching my kids. I love watching the kids. It's a, it's a young man's sport. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a young man's sport. You get up and down, you know take elbows to the face and, you know, knees and uh, ribs and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's I don't else's miss turn. it. Yeah, it's somebody <laughs> else's turn. I'll go out there, break a sweat, shoot a couple of jumpers or, you know, I may even run a couple of lines, but I'm not about to get out there and grind and bump and come in and worry about my diet. I ain't, I'm cool. <laughs> I want a cold beer. <laughs> you know, I want a fat, juicy hamburger. <laughs> That's no funny. Well, I'll tell you, I think we're out of time, but there's one question we always like to ask. And um, is there a question today that, that you wish we had asked you that we didn't? Um, no, y'all had some great ones. No, <laughs> not really. Um, 
Y'all even the cowboy ones, that was good. Cause that's, <laughs> you know, I love to, you know, to give it to um <laughs> Let's see. That's what, oh, oh, I got one. Here's one for, for all you Dallasites. Back in the day, there was this rumor about me being the Mavs man. So let me go ahead and get this clear and straight since we're in Dallas. Do I look like <laughs> I would be somebody's mascot? <laughs> okay. I'm a basketball player. So get that straight, Dallas. You heard it here. You heard it here. <laughs> Dallas, this is Jimmy King. <laughs> We're so now, glad. I would do it if the check was right, but I was not the uh, Mav Man. Mark Cuban, if you're watching, here's your next <laughs> <right>. mascot. <laughs> your next mascot right here. <laughs> Jimmy King. Well, we're so glad we got to have you today. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule. No, and for those of you in the audience who don't know, um, Jimmy grew up with Stacy's husband. Yep. So yep. they've known him a he long said time. Robert, he's known bro, you that's my guy. Since you were a snotty nosed kid. That's and, what he's, he said. and he's right. <laughs> Ever since we were begging for food, me and his little brother would be riding bikes. Jimmy, shout out to Jimmy, his brother. We'd be riding bikes all over Dallas Metro. Matter of fact, we used to ride our bikes out here. <laughs> then we would come back home and, and, uh, and, and Ro and Rob would have to uh, share his dinner with, with me and, and Jimmy and, uh, and Tim yeah, we're just <laughs> and the rest of the crew. Little, little oh yeah, That's we were the tag along snotty nose kids. We wanted to do everything they did. They were the coolest in the, in the city. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, we're so glad you joined us today. Thank, thank you, you. <laughs> no, very thank much. Thank you, I appreciate it. And uh, we're glad that the audience joined us today as well. We'll look forward to seeing you next month. And for now, I'm Carolee. I'm Stacy, and, and we, we are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals. Thank you for joining us on North Texas Networkers. Visit our website, mariposagroupdfw.com. That's M-A-R-I-P-O-S-A group dfw.com for more information about the show and other resources. I'm Carolee. And I'm Stacy, and, and we, we are, are your real estate, estate professionals. professionals.